Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how I made my Hamilton Spencer. You can find out more about this charity pattern in the description box below. After taping the pattern sheet together I made a mock-up. After some alterations I made a second mock-up before I cut into my silk taffeta. I started with a size 12-14 but I ended up with about an 8-10 after my alterations. The first step was to cut a lot of bias strips for the double piping and the rouleau trim. I pressed them stretch to prevent puckering. After that I prepared the cord for the piping. I needed two lengths of cord for one piping piece. I stitched the piping with a zipper foot and after that I sewed the second cord next to the first. After preparing all the double piping for the dispenser, I started to do all the markings on my front pattern pieces. I traced them with waxed paper and a tracing wheel and after that I went over these lines with thread tracing. Then I flatlined these pieces. Next came the preparation for the front decoration. I pricked tiny holes in the template piece like Bernadette Banner did in her video. Then I took my chalk sharpening tool, which contains a fine powder of chalk and put a little bit of it on the template piece. I wrapped this through the prick holes with a piece of scrap fabric. This way I had the lines transferred to my front pieces. I wanted the markings to be a bit more durable though, so in the end I used silver sharpie to mark the leaves. I tested it on a scrap of my silk and it didn't bleed out. Using a window I transferred the template to the backside too to use it on the other front piece. I thought this was really pretty and silver on the green. After that it was time for some more bias cord adventures. This time I made the rouleau trim. I cut a piece of cord, double the length of the bias strip to make these. Half of the cord needs to be inside of the bias, the other one has to be outside. After some fiddling with this, it finally turned itself inside out and I cut off the uncovered part of the cord. If you make the rouleau first, you could use the cut off ends for the piping, but I had already done that, so I saved them for another project. I did this for all the yardage I needed and ended up with a lot of these fabric spaghettis. Next, I put the first front piece into my embroidery hoop and started sewing on the rouleau motifs. I spent a few cozy couch sewing evenings with these before they were eventually done. I made the little fabric pom-poms next because they're part of the front design. I made about 35 at first and needed 6 more later in the project. So you can make about 40 of them at this point. Et voila, little fabric ghosts. After that I added them to the front pieces. Mm -hmm. 
Next thing to do was sewing the darts. I cut the interfacing for the front piece from horsehair canvas because that's what I had in my stash. I flipped the piece because this only needs to extend to the interfacing line. Then I marked all the lines that I needed on the interfacing too. The row line and the lapel edges are stabilized with some cotton tape. This interfacing piece is going to be attached to the front pieces. To make the lapel stand up, pet stitching is used. Another task I could do in front of the TV. I also had my little helpers with me there. After stitching, the lapel was pressed over a seam roll. The pet stitching came out a little bit wobbly, but I still like it. And then I went on to the back pieces. I also flatlined these with my cotton fabric and then I stitched the back seams. I marked all the seam allowances and then I went over that with thread racing. I also closed the side seams and the shoulder seams. The horsehair layer wasn't sewn into the shoulder seams but basted over the seam. I stitched on the belt next. Where the lapel and the neckline meet, the seam allowance needs to be cut. Before that, I reinforced that point with stay stitching. This way the layers can be pressed in different directions. I pinned the double piping all around the edge, from lapel edge to lapel edge. I also basted the piping in place and then used my machine to sew it in place.
Then I prepared the collar. I used the horse hair canvas and stitched that to my flat lining fabric. On top of that came a piece of outer fabric. This also gets the double piping. The collar was now ready to get stitched into the neckline. Here I'm cutting a lining piece for the belt. I stitched that on by machine and then basted it to the flat lining layer. Time for some mid-project appreciation. Also this was before the belt was lined. <laughs> Oops! On to the lining. I cut my lining pieces from this rayon lining fabric. I cut the front facings from the fashion fabric. This was done much faster without all the decoration pieces. Again I had to clip into the seam allowance. Before the spencer was lined I had to line the collar. The lining was backed out like the instruction calls it. I stitched it right sides together all around the front. I slip stitched the lining close on the collar seam and over the belt. I turned the right side out and gave it a good press. Then I was ready to move on to the sleeves. And there is a lot going on on these sleeves. I started with the preparation of the lattice sleeve design. It is made from fabric tubes, just like the rouleau but without a cord in it. These are then pressed flat. Of course the sleeve pieces got their flat lining done too. I used the design template and carefully cut little slits into it, where the markings needed to be done.
I then marked the outer edges and the little notches I previously cut. I marked the middle and then I thread trace the lines and carefully marked the notches with my sharpie, making sure I only did this where these got covered by the design. I think this took me longer to mark this thing than to actually sew it down. Then I pinned down the first fabric strip. One side of this is made from two lengths of strips overlapping each other. I really got confused by this and had to color code this on my instruction sheet. I stitched the design down by hand, only where the notches had been marked before. As I said, this thing confused me and so I had to make sure I did it right. The design is topped off with some more fabric pom-poms and a bow. Sewing the sleeves was pretty straightforward after that. Of course the sleeve got piping too. After that I lined the sleeve. Next on my list were the sleeve puffs. These are gathered into these little sleeve bands, which I had to mark with the thread tracing. I needed these markings for the sleeve petals later on. And of course, a little more piping. Finished sleeve puff got basted to the actual sleeve, making sure to match all the notches.
the whole thing was also gathered to fit into the armhole. I pinned the sleeves in place and sewed them on my machine. And there's a lot going on in that seam. Again I closed the lining with a slip stitch. Before I could finish the spencer I needed more bias strips. These were also pressed stretched and here you can really see the difference. This time the strips are folded and there's a seam 5 8 of an inch from the fold. Here I'm marking the darts on the petal base shapes. I also flatlined these petal bases. I stitched the darts with my machine and cut them open. Then I took the strips and shaped them over the template. There are four layers on each petal piece. I marked the seams on the strips while these were pinned onto the base. A fellow costumer did a really helpful tutorial on these. I will link that down below. Then I stitched the two little seams and pressed them open. The layer is now again pinned to the base and stitched. I got away without basting but it may be something to do on another type of fabric. The next layer is then marked with thread. I repeated that four times per petal and then I lined these. After turning them right sides out they needed some serious pressing. I had to put in some stitches on the outer shape because it refused to lay flat, but that's fine. I made all six petals and then I put them together to form this kind of cap. I stitched them together by hand where indicated on the pattern. Now I was so close to be done. I put the spencer on my mannequin and pinned the petal sleeve guide to it. I marked the attachment points with thread. Before I could finish this small one and a half month long project, I had to attach the petals to the sleeve. few more stitches. And then it was done. As I said it took me over a month to complete but it was so worth it.
I loved the design since the first time I saw it and I couldn't be more satisfied with my version. Please consider supporting the costume collision following the link in the description box below. And here it is, my Hamilton inspired look. I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching and until next time!